What's up YouTube? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. If you've been following along with our Car Audio Fabrication Project Rebuild Build, you know that we've already pulled out the old install, we've treated the trunk with sound deadening, we've built ourselves a battery rack, built an amplifier rack, and we've even installed a new primary battery under the hood. If you guys are just joining in on the action and you haven't seen those videos, be sure to check out the video playlist up above. Now I've actually completed quite a bit more of Project Rebuild, so I have a ton of footage that I now need to get through editing for you guys, so there's going to be a lot of videos coming out soon. Thumbs up for more videos! In this video we're going to be talking about wiring everything, how we connect the amplifiers, how we connect the distribution block that you guys have wanted to know all about, how we connect some of our battery terminals, and how we run all of our signal wires up to the front. There's a ton of footage in this video that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. Speaking of more footage and more videos, I have a favor to ask of you guys. If you follow me on Instagram at Car Audio Fab, you may have saw a few weeks ago that I was asking for some of your input on a Q&A session for videos that I want to start doing here on the channel. If you guys could do me a favor and make sure that you also follow the Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash car audio fabrication. And if you could let me know your fabrication related questions there, it'd be appreciated because that will give me content to use for these question and answer videos. All right guys, thanks again. Without further ado, let's get started with wiring project rebuild. For the wiring of Project Rebuild, we're going to be using the Connection product line from Electromedia. Electromedia is the company behind Audison, Hertz, and the Connection line here in the United States and is used exclusively by many of the top car audio retailers. The Connection product line is made up of several different high quality installation pieces that make installations much more reliable and easy to install. At the heart of any system is a high quality distribution block. In this case, Project Rebuild will be using an SFD41C from the connection line. This distro block gives me four fused positive terminals and four ground terminals all in one convenient package. After finding a location for it to be mounted, I turn my attention to the battery terminals that will be used on the rear secondary battery. One of my absolute favorite features of these battery terminals is that they have a built-in fused one aught terminal. This means when they're used on a primary battery, I don't have to find a mounting location for a separate fuse block as it's built right into the terminal. This also comes in handy on the secondary battery because we want to make sure that the lead that is attached to its positive terminal is also fused. For each wire that I run, I first run it in a temporary manner and cut it to size. Something that I found to really come in handy in temporarily holding the wires in place are these cool velcro strips. A link to these along with all the other different products that I use is down in the video description. Now you may notice I'm temporarily using an 8 gauge wire in place of a 0 gauge wire for the main 1400 watt amplifier. This is by no means permanent, I just use 8 gauge a lot of times because it's more flexible and then it allows me to get an acceptable wire length that I then transfer to the 0 gauge wire when I cut it. For each of the wires I'm using wire ferrules. For more information about wire ferrules be sure to check out one of our previous videos down in the video description or on screen. With the wire ferrule in place I'm applying TechFlex. TechFlex allows me to color code all the wiring throughout the build and it also provides an additional level of protection. Once the wire is covered I use a heat knife in order to cut it to length. Then to finish prepping the wire I apply one of my custom car audio fabrication heat shrinks that I got from wirecare.com. I'll be doing this process for literally every single one of the wires within this build, and as you can see, it gives us a really clean, nice, custom look. I started with connecting the secondary battery to the distribution block. Keep in mind that that wire is protected by a fuse within the battery terminal, so if that wire does short out by chance, the fuse will protect the wire. At this point, I've also ran the positive and ground connections to the amplifiers. Next, we need to make a new location for our secondary battery along with the distribution block to ground. I'm thinking that this particular location will be really good because it's really close to the frame. So I start with marking the spot with a center punch. I've connected the negative multimeter lead to the battery ground cable at the front of the vehicle and I'm probing this new ground location using the positive lead. I then measure the resistance value. Anything under half ohm is considered acceptable and in this case I have one tenth of an ohm. I drill a hole for our new ground terminal and then I use a wire brush in order to remove the paint around this hole. I climb under the vehicle and insert a bolt through this hole. 
I then secure the ground terminal to this bolt using a hex nut. Now I want to point out that I've used all stainless steel hardware in order to prevent corrosion, but I'm also using dielectric grease to protect the metal surfaces as well. Additionally, under the vehicle, I'll even apply a layer of underbody treatment. This helps to ensure that the vehicle retains its weatherproof integrity. Next, I connect one of the zero gauge ground wires from the wiring distribution block to the new grounding point. Although I didn't get it on film, the other grounding point is used to connect straight to the secondary battery. Now of course we also have to run positive power from our front battery to our rear battery distribution. I'm running this power wire closely along the OEM wiring path. Note that I'm doing this on the passenger side of the vehicle. All of the signal wires and speaker wires will be ran on the driver's side. Next I'm locating the mini distribution blocks for a 12 volt constant source and ground. These will be used in conjunction with relays to power my Bit1 processor and LEDs throughout the install. I will also be installing terminal strips so that I can add additional accessories in the future. Since I'll be running 16 gauge wire out of the small distribution blocks, it's important that I select a fuse that will protect the 16 gauge wiring for use within the main distribution block. I'll explain this more in a future video. In the meantime, I needed to create a mounting location for the digital signal processor, so I started with making this mounting plate. After painting it, I secured it into the vehicle using stainless steel hardware. With the processor installed, I was able to run all of my RCA signal cables along with all the speaker wires. As always, I used TechFlex and you can see that I picked out this cool racing stripe pattern. Again, note that all the speaker wire connections run down the left hand side of the vehicle, whereas the RCAs connect over from the left hand side down the middle. This ensures that our signal cables stay noise free as they're far away from any of the electrical power wires. I've also used these special pieces of harness mounting tape from Tessa Tape. They really came in handy for locating all of the wiring. To complete the wiring for now, I've installed a relay to control the turn on of the processor and amps using the OEM turn on lead. With these steps complete, the wiring is ready for us to start pumping some jams. Now I know I skipped some of the detailed steps here, but my plan is to come back and review some of the more in-depth things, like each of the connections for the secondary battery, along with proper fusing techniques. But I want to do this in a separate detailed videos, as these build log videos are really meant to be quick overviews of the build process. Speaking of build log videos, many of you may have noticed in this particular shot here that there's sound insulation on the floor now. That's because in the next video build log we're going to be talking about applying sound treatment to the inside interior of the entire vehicle. So if you're new to the channel I would love to have you as a subscriber. This will allow you to be notified when I upload future videos. A special thanks goes out to all you guys who are already subscribed. I really appreciate you watching these videos. These videos do take a lot of my extra spare time to make, so if you could do me a favor and just slam that like button, it'd be greatly appreciated. It makes sure that other guys that would enjoy this content can see it as well. I also have to give a special thanks to all the guys over at Patreon that have signed up to help support the making of these videos. I do have a lot of hard costs for making these videos, from editing software to camera equipment, so by signing up for the Patreon support group, these guys have really helped me to offset the financial burden and cost I face making this content. It's been quite a while since anyone has signed up for it, so if you enjoy the content and find it valuable, I'd really appreciate you taking the time to check it out and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. A special thanks to Emmanuel, Rory, Eddie, Richard, Mark, Truman, Jerry, and all the other Patreon supporters. Again guys, thank you for helping me make this possible. To everyone else, thank you again for watching this video. If you haven't seen the other videos on screen, be sure to check them out. And until next time, keep it loud.